7 o'clock, my name is Amanda Spear, we're at St. Peter's Church, and we are finishing up, beginning tonight through uh, mid-June, we are finishing up um, the relationship between the prophets and the kings, and actually tonight we're going to start to uh, explain that relationship. And what you need is to have, the most important thing is this thing right here, and the map. Did you all get the map? No. Yeah. Do we need the other piece of paper? The other piece of paper is simply the outline I gave of, um, I'll pass that out. If you don't have it, take it. But you do want the map. And now I'm going to draw a um, Maslo Benelli map. It's a map that looks <laughs> exactly like his subway um, map, which is to say it is not accurate, but it will do what has to be done and we'll all be in squares. <laughs> because you know that right angles are the only angles. Okay, this is... No, he said we need one. Oh, I don't know. Do you have any spare maps there? Where? There should be enough. There should be enough. No, the maps.
This is the way the world worked. And it stayed that way for a while. Important that you know that. Um, if you look at this, you can see, you, you read down, the, the column goes, um, it goes like this and then this. So the top column is continued on the bottom column. Um, and so just a couple things to note from the, from the, the thing. Uh, there are some mistakes in here that I'm going to correct. But uh, the yellow line is this kingdom right here. That's Israel. The green line, which is longer as you see, is this kingdom right here. And then the very top, where it says kings of Assyria, it's right underneath it says, and it names them. Um, that's these folks up here, which will turn into, um, where does it turn into Babylon? It does. Um, right down at the bottom, around 660, on the, on the bottom uh, right, hand, right hand corner, it says Babylonian Empire. All right, so that, and then finally you get to, um, back to the top in the 500s, mm -hmm. top of the bottom quarter, mm -hmm. you have the, the Persian Empire. Mm -hmm. um, and then it names for you, and that's the most important thing about this next to one other thing, who was king of what during when? Mm -hmm. So you have parallels, for instance, and these guys will be important tonight, Way over on the second quadrant uh, top, you have Jeroboam the second mm -hmm. in um, mm -hmm. in Israel, and you have King Uzziah uh, and Amaziah and Jotham at the same time. And then in little multicolored squares are um, prophets. So I would like you to take a pencil, pen, or marker and cross out. Um, under Jeroboam the second, cross out Jonah. He has no business being there. How do you get there? Um, it's the one, nobody knows where to put him. But I wouldn't put him there. I, I don't see Jonah. Jonah is right. Oh, yeah. On top of uh, Amos. Somewhere here. Yeah. Right there. Right. Just cross him out. He doesn't belong there. Remember, they didn't put dates on these as opposed to letters from the senior pastor at St. Peter, so you get this problem. Um, and there's going to be trouble down the road with Isaiah, but we'll get to him. Um, okay. That's the period of time, and that's the geography of where we're going to be. Um, so, and we have to deal with the problems we have to deal with, the problems that prophets have to deal with, is number one, the effect of this part of the world and this part of the world on the way the people in this part of the world live. This is context. Okay, the context is that these people here in the middle live under constant, unmitigated threat. And the only time they're not under pressure, under threat, is when both the top and the bottom, the north and the south, are quiet. There's something else going on. If they're not quiet, um, there's tremendous pressure. Are they all self-sufficient? Every one of them is self-sufficient. However, how it's, so that's true. They're all self-sufficient. But at times, you have um, Assyria having a client state to be Syria. Or in one case, which we'll get to, Israel and Syria gang up against Judah. Um, toward the end of history, you have this constant battle between us, uh, the Babylonians rather, and Egypt. And where does the battle where does the battle happen? Well, look at the map. They happen in the middle. I don't want I don't want to battle in Egypt if I'm the Pharaoh of Egypt, and I certainly don't want to battle in Assyria if I'm the king of Assyria. So we go halfway. We go halfway, and, and one of the important things is that right up the middle here, actually it goes this way. Um, there is a road. It's called the King's Highway. Doesn't matter who the king is and which country they're from. The King's Highway runs right through, back to back, back and forth, and every battle happens right in the middle of the King's Highway. 
And right in the middle of the King's Highway is the town of, we've talked about this, Megiddo. Megiddo. Mm -hmm. And then from the, uh, from the hill of Megiddo, you look across the Jezreel Valley. The Jezreel Valley is the most fertile part of, of Israel, even today. In fact, I, I one night, I think it was, might have been Monday of Holy Week, Carol and I were um, trying to recover um, from the Holy Week. And uh, the movie Exodus came on. Oh, yeah. And there's a wonderful scene um, in Exodus that I commend to you. Because just to get the geography right, in the scene that, you know, the, the, ex, the boat, the Exodus has landed, uh, Paul Newman uh, and whoever the woman lead is, I never know who that woman is. Thank, thank, thank you. She, they're on their way, they're driving from Tel Aviv to, um, to, the, to the kibbutz that they're, he's a part of, and they stop at Megiddo. And they climb the mountain and Paul Newman is doing a story about his ancestors who come from that area, and they look, uh, um, they look this way, and there's this incredible sight, incredible um, uh, uh, panoramic view of the Jezreel Valley, mm -hmm. which by then was already, um, it's before the, the 1948 War for Independence, but it was already um, basically in the hands of, his, of, of Jews. And it's blooming like you cannot believe. Even in black and white, you can see uh, life. So the Jezreel Valley is sort of, it's basically the Midwest. It's where all the grain and everything else grows. Fantastic place. It's still that way today. They have a few nuclear power plants, but no, no other kind of energy. I have a quick slightly of subject question. On which, which, well, could, could I read them um, where uh, Muhammad started the last prophet? Or the Bible? In the Bible? Yeah. None of them. He's with one of our guys in a chapter and he goes someplace else. Not in the Bible. There's no Muhammad in there? Well, it's 700 years later. He has a, he has a brother in the Bible, right? Yeah. I don't know. Not in the Bible. Muhammad has no, it's not, he doesn't come up, ever. Muhammad isn't born until 628 AD. The last book of the New Testament is written in 110. 120. All so right. 500 years have to go by before Ish Muhammad comes on. Ish Ishmael's Ish mentioned. Now, like the Muslims should about Ishmael. That's what they say. Okay. To, it is. So, all I want to say about this, and then I'm going to go on to this, is that um, mythologically, we're all children of Abraham. Christians are children of Abraham through Jews to Abraham, through, through, uh, through Jews. Uh, to Ishmael's brother, whose name is, anybody know Ishmael's brother? Isaac. Isaac, very good. Very good. So, I, so we're, we're children of, of Abraham through, through Jews, back to Isaac, back to Abraham. According to, that's our myth, according to their myth, they're children of Abraham through Ishmael, who gets, Ishmael and his mother get thrown out in the Bible, get, Pushed out into the into the desert. You want to read that? It's the last. Let's say it's Genesis 12 through 20. That's where the story is. But that's not Muhammad. That's Ishmael. About uh, 2,600 years before. So we don't, do we have anywhere to where it starts heading like a break off point to where no. the Muslim begins no. anywhere? No. No. no, it's all it's all later history. I can do it, but I wouldn't call it a break off. Um, I would call it something else. I won't tell you what I'll call it, but I won't call it a break off. There is a point that it starts Muslim somewhere. It starts in 600, but it doesn't start. It's, it starts in 620 something, but it's not a break off. It's would be it would be disrespectful to Islam to say that. Although a lot of Christians seem to think that all Islam is is a break off of Christianity. And Judaism. Islam doesn't start the 600? Yeah, 650, 660, something like that. So what are they, like the Babylonians going back to a couple thousand years ago, as like Saddam Hussein was referred to about his heritage. So that's not Islam? That's no. the thing? No, there was no Islam until six, 650 AD. Okay. This, what we're talking about here, is 900 <coughs> BC. 900 years before the birth of Jesus, 600 years after the birth of Jesus. 
1,500 years, these people, and so it's worth saying this, all of these people, except for the Egyptians, all of these people, let me say that again, all of these people, except for the Egyptians and the Persians, all of these other people are Semitic people, of which today there are Arabs and there are Jews in this part of the world. These people, Persians, this is modern day Iran, they are not Semitic people. They are Muslims, but they're not Semitic. Right. Okay, they're different. They're not Arabs. These like people became like Arabs. That. These people are not Arabs. They might have been the United Arab Republic, but they're Egyptian. They're different ethnically than these people. And Islam's largest country, you have to remember this. It's very important to remember this so you don't think all, anybody who's an Arab is a Muslim. That is A, not true. B, if you added up all the Muslims in the, in, in the Middle East, and everyone of Middle Eastern descent who is a Muslim anywhere in the world, it would not equal the number of, of, of Muslims in the most Muslim country on earth, which is Indonesia. <laughs> so nobody thinks about Indonesia. So we, you gotta, you gotta not think Islam, you have to not think Arab, you gotta think these are all cousins of each other. And these people are maybe third cousins of each other. They don't claim Abraham. They don't claim Abraham. These people do. Because, yes, because, because remember, in, Gen in Genesis 12, <coughs> Abraham leaves Ur of the Chaldees right there. And he goes this way. So these are Semitic people. These are Abrahamic people. So the difference between a Semitic and somebody else is whether they believe in Abraham and Ishmael and others don't believe in that chain. Not believe. Abraham. Not believe. Are genetically. are genetically connected to each other. These people are separate. How, so if everything came from Abraham, how could they be genetically separate? They're not from Abraham. Abraham goes to Egypt. Egypt already existed before Abraham got there. This country wasn't there at all. He's, the, the, what's the language in in uh, Iran? Farsi. 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 Yeah. That's what they're. Okay. So how did they? Who put them there in the first place? If, if Noah's Ark wiped everything out, then we keep going with Abraham. And <laughs> Michael, in all due respect, we're not going there. That's where you're not. You're 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 in a world I don't want to even touch. So sorry, I can't I can't do it. Um, there were okay. other people, but it was up. Some brothers and sisters, but I don't want to talk about Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> but if you find them, let me know. Um, okay, so nine nine sixty or so, these break up. Um, I'm sorry, who breaks? Okay. Um, Israel and Judah okay. break up. Just to help you with the Bible, there. So this has another. This has two other names. This is where you get confused. Okay, Israel's referred to in the Bible in several different ways. Israel, the northern kingdom, is often called Ephraim because the largest territory here is, in theory, the territory given to this son of Jacob, the son of Israel, called Ephraim. So this is Ephraim, often. And Judah is still Judah. Or this is called Samaria. Why? Because the capital, the political capital of this country is Samaria. So if you read the words Ephraim, if you read the word Israel, it means the northern part of the country. If you read the word Ephraim, it's the northern part of the country. If you read the word Samaria, it's the northern part of the country. Now are you going to explain how, why, and how they split? We did that already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> But but there's a video on that. I mean YouTube. Yeah. It is. Right? I've never been able to say that. Down here, Judah is always referred to Judah, or it's referred to as Jerusalem. Or it's referred to because it stays consistent as the kingdom of David. So Judah, Jerusalem, Kingdom of David, Israel, Ephraim, Samaria. Moving to the left, which is my preferred action. Um, Syria is also called two different names. It's called Aram, A-R-A-M, from which we get the word Aramaic, which ultimately becomes the language of the whole place. 
Zeria is Aram. And Aram, so in the Bible they could call it Syria, they could call it Aram, and they could call it Damascus, because Damascus is the capital. So when you get confused when you read the Old Testament, this I hope will help you. Right. Yeah. You think because, they're separate places. Right, and especially when you're dealing with literary prophets, that is prophets whose, whose writings are written down for them. It's, you know, it's like saying, oh, what's a good example? They're, they're poetic ways of saying, uh, well, you could refer to Columbia, the gem of the ocean, is the United States. But that's a poetic way of saying it. Ephraim is a poetic, with historic roots, way of saying all of this. So you even got the United States and America. Yeah. Two different names. Right. But we all think right. it's one We never place. call it Washington yet, it's, unless you're outside of Washington and want to complain. Is that a plural word, Ephraim? No, it's a singular. It's a singular. Um, I don't know what it means off the top of my head. Um, Okay, so yeah, Jerusalem here, uh, and remember one of the things we talked about, because we're going to get into this in about a minute, is that um, in Judah, when, this, when they split, in Judah was the temple in Jerusalem, and the priesthood, and the sacrifices. So when they split, the king up here, his name is Jeroboam, did not want his people going down here to worship, even though they worshiped the same God. So this king, Jeroboam, see if, this, if you remember this, we read it, built two shrines, two temples, one in the north and one in the south. And in those temples, this king put a golden, golden calf. calf. So these people worshipped um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who they called Elohim, here at two sites, both of which had golden caps. What are those two sites? Um, so uh, Dan and Bethel. Okay. Bethel. Dan and Bethel. Okay. Yeah. So here. Right. This, this group worshiped the same God, had the same, quote, Ten Commandments, unquote. Had the priesthood descendant, they said, descendant from um, uh, Aaron, and had a temple built by Solomon, and had, had sacrifices here. They called their God Yahweh. And if you remember from way in the beginning, the people who write the Yahwistic account come from here, the people who wrote the Eloist account, J and E, E is coming from here. The people who are left write a priestly account. They're from down here too. And the people who are also left later on write the Deuteronomic history, that's D, and they're also from down here. So if you think about it, the Bible we have today, the Old Testament, is three quarters of the Old Testament and all the editing comes from here, not from here. But now the story of the golden calf, which is so negative, is that a, uh, a, a J story that is yes. knocking the north? Yes, exactly. We talked about that too. Um, <laughs> see the video. The J, the, when, they, when you finally read the story in Jeroboam, the story of Jeroboam, it, it's in 1 uh, Kings. Um, Jeroboam builds these, these two temples on these two sites. And he now he offers sacrifice. And, and the quote there that he says to the people of Israel is, Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Which is exactly the sentence recorded in Exodus that the people who built the golden calf, um, actually it's Aaron is the bad guy in that one, Builds the golden calf, and what did he say to the people? Here is your God, here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's not about building a golden calf in in the Exodus. That's about this guy building a golden calf. But he's usually poor old gods. Yes. Well, you see, here's the fun part. What do you do with a God who's also whose very name is a plural? Remember, God is Elohim. And that's a plural word. 
So, so, so again, I hope the map helps you when you look back at where we've been, and also helps you when you hear profits, because the profits are going to um, be be um, referring to these countries by different names. How did they get away with that with the two cabs? I mean, in a sense, I mean, they were already recommended for having well, the except cab. May, except maybe not. Huh? Maybe they were not reprimanded. We, that's the story. That's the story written by these people about these people. It's not necessarily what happened. Part of what we got to do is think about the context and the what's important here in the, in the with the scriptures is the is the text and the context and not what it is purportedly reporting because. <coughs> Nobody was there. So when they report uh, um, the creation, nobody was there writing notes. When they report um, uh, the exodus, nobody was writing notes, despite Charlton Heston. <laughs> nobody was writing notes. So there are no notes. So these are people, and they're writing from their own point of view. So these people are, the, these, these people are gone for 200 years before these people are gone. They get to write the notes, mm -hmm. and even better, they get to come back from exile and write the notes again. Then we say the victors get to write yeah. history. These aren't the victors necessarily. They're, they're the they're the, the ones survivors. That left. They're the, the remnant. Left. The remnant writes. The, the mm -hmm. remnant does the writing. So there's no. It's not a linear progression. So would you say in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Yahweh stories and the El Elohim stories are interwoven within the? There, it's like one great. That's confusing. It is, but it's, but, and I love what happens. So just let me give you one example of you just living through this. You li live through unwrapping, un un unraveling the two stories. Uh, the Easter vision. Who, who took part in the Noah story? Anybody? You danced, <laughs> but not Noah. I mean, not Noah. Yeah, I was not God. Noah, it was, uh, I was God in Noah's story. Uh, yes, the Noah story. Okay, you were God. So. I want you to think, God, about what you said. You, you said to Noah, I, listen carefully. I listen with, with these ears, these ears that say J and E. Mm -hmm. So you said to Noah, take two pair of animals and seven pair of unclean, of unclean. unclean two, uh, a pair of clean and seven pair of unclean animals, and you gave a whole, whole little speech about sacrifice. Well, you guys did pee. If you would have done just E, I mean, and literally you edited it. The, the, that would, and actually you didn't, they did it years ago. So it's, it's selected verses to, to make one narrative. But you didn't say two pair of animals, uh, a pair of animals ever, yet that's in the story. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the E part, but the, but the P part is completely, they're interwoven and unless you pay attention or you do what the church did whenever they did it, and that was pull them apart. You don't hear it. So um, I would. I didn't see the movie. I don't want to see the movie. I don't plan on seeing the movie even at home. But the but the but the Noah story. I'd be interested to see how many pairs of animals that uh, Russell Crowe put on the ark. <laughs> <laughs>